Welcome back to some of the earliest steps in converting this tractor to electric. Last time I got the tractor delivered and I brought it into my garage workshop. This is an International 300 utility. And one of the first things I wanted to do after getting it in is just take a look at the tractor. Uh, I wanted to see what was under the hood. Now, if you've never worked on a tractor before, uh, one thing you might not know is it doesn't have a hood like a car. Um, this tractor here actually has a uh, three-part sheet metal, so I have to unbolt this. There are two sides, and then down the, the middle, there's a strip that they both brace against. So by unbolting these and removing these, that's the equivalent of popping the hood. Once I had all the sheet metal removed, I could take a look at the engine. It's just a very simple four-cylinder gasoline engine. Uh, nothing too fancy in there. Frankly, it looks a little foreign to me. I'm used to working on cars that are about 50 years newer. So even like the oil filter and things like that, just because they're so old fashioned, uh, definitely look a little bit different. Just to start prepping to work on the tractor, I saw that on the back, uh, there were a couple of parts here on the hitch that actually have quick releases. So I thought I will quickly release those and pull them out. That's gonna give me some more room to walk around the tractor and one less thing to whack my shin on. But the first thing is to get this entire loader off of here to get at the engine and remove it. And one of the issues is that following this arm back, we've got a plate welded on here. So I thought, uh-oh, I'm not gonna be able to pull this arm off of this bracket that mounts to the rear axle back here. And that, that plate, that's just gonna catch on uh, the brakes, the hoses, it's gonna be really, really tough to get out. But I took a look right here and I cleaned out as best I could uh, any dirt and that sort of thing. And sure enough, there's a number of welds. This right here, that's all, that's all welded right there. But once I got all the dirt out, I realized back here, maybe this isn't actually welded. So I got out my old school jack. I absolutely love this little guy right here. Um, I think that's a Model T car jack, but it's got this great little mechanism so you can jack up and down with it just by flipping the little ratchet mechanism there. And I was able to use that to uh, break loose where the arm here uh, goes in there. So it looks like that is in fact not welded. So if I can get that out, I think I can get this whole thing off of here. But if we look way back in the corner, there's still a heavy duty bolt through that. I'm gonna have to get that out there. I already tried on the other side. Uh, I got the bolt out, but I did it by breaking it. We'll uh, try it again this time. Look at that. That is absolutely moving. So it looks like that weld holds a piece of scrap on and that's just kind of wedged in that hole there. But now I gotta figure out how to get that bolt out. So I did get the bolt out. Um, I PB blasted it last night. I applied some heat still snapped the darn thing, which is fine, it's an old bolt, I'll just replace that. But this is loose and I should be able to crank up with the jack. So originally with all that dirt in there, I couldn't tell where this was welded. This right here is an extra piece of metal that's welded on here, but it's not welded between that and back here. Um, but it was still hard to tell just because of all the dirt. But sure enough, that's separate. So it looks like this was just like a spacer somebody added. So right back in there, just a minute ago, that whole arm was set down inside that C channel. And now it's, uh, you can see there's two bolt holes through there. Uh, I'm gonna try to clean it out and I'll have to make sure, I might even need to grind things down a little bit when I go to put this back in. 
Back at the front of the tractor, it was time to loosen these bolts, which were actually a little trickier than I thought. I PB blastered them and then I headed over to the farm and fleet store to pick up some tools. I needed some extra large wrenches as I did have a monkey wrench, but it's not the same. Monkey wrenches are bulkier and don't have the closed end. I also got a 5 16ths and inch and an eighth socket, as well as a drain tub for draining the hydraulics. I noticed that they did have some quick release hydraulic couplers, so I picked up one set in the 3 8 size, which matched the hoses that are on this tractor. I was also pleasantly surprised that at the store they had an international harvester shop manual, but it was the wrong one. So I mail ordered the correct one, the IH-10, which came in the mail a couple of days later. Back at the tractor, it was still pretty much a trick to get at these nuts and bolts, uh, as they are between the tractor and the loader frame. I was able to get the correct wrenches and my socket in there, but I still needed to put some heat and a tremendous amount of torque in there, which is where my three and a half foot long cheater bar came in handy. Once the nuts and bolts were removed, I could loosen the loader frame from this corner of the tractor, and I did the same thing over on the other corner as well. The only thing left stopping me was that all the hydraulic lines were still connected between the loader and the tractor. I thought I'd start with this pair of hoses right here. Again, the idea is to put some quick releases on there. Uh, this pair of hoses uh, controls the bucket, the wrist of the entire loader. Um, if you've never worked on hydraulics before, there's a couple different places here you can put the wrenches and you kind of have to take a look to see which part spins versus which part doesn't on that hose. Um, I started with a pair of large wrenches going in opposite directions so I wouldn't twist anything oddly. Once I broke that initial seal, then I could just loosen it up with a single wrench. Once that was off, I could drain the little bit of hydraulic fluid out of it. I do have a bucket underneath all of this. I also wanted to make sure to label the hoses so I would know which ports they would go back to. On the other pair of hoses, I'd be tempted to put the quick releases right there, except for, for starters, that's not the free spinning end of the hoses. And if we look up, uh, we come to a T right here. The power is split to the left and the right cylinders that control the main lifting power of the arms. But you can also see that it comes to a T, and this is actually a little bit of a problem. But the crazy thing here is that um, coming off of that, these hoses here are going through the tractor, right through the middle, not over it, not under it, but right through the middle. So there is no way I can get this loader off without disconnecting those hoses first. So I think that might be the next step. So on the other side of the tractor, these hydraulic hoses right here, the one with the green stripe is coming down to the near side of the hydraulics and the plain black one is going up to the far side of the hydraulics. I'm saying that mostly for my own benefit, so I don't hook them back up backwards later. So I'll need to take this off right here. Okay, I got the left cylinder uh, hydraulic lines disconnected. I also put a little piece of colored tape on there. Uh, that way I easily know what hose goes back to what port to keep them all straight. So now I gotta take those two hoses and pull them through the tractor and out the other side. Hopefully do this without getting too nasty. Just gonna let the other end of that hose drain for a minute. So maybe the way to do this is to run these hoses right up over the top, kind of along here, back to the other side, because then that way the entire loader can come off. Uh, the muffler pops right out, so that's not an issue. Uh, but with these hoses running through the tractor, there's no way that this was coming off. So I can't think of any reasons not to run this right over the top, so we'll do that at least temporarily. And we'll need an extension for this one. 
The loader is now completely physically detached from the tractor, but I'm going to need some of those hydraulic quick releases as well as some extension hoses to hook the hydraulics back up and use the power of the loader to remove it from the tractor. I'm also making all these videos into a playlist, so make sure to check that playlist so that you see all the videos about this project. And as always, we'd love it if you would like, comment, share, and visit us at 300mpg.org. And until next time, stay charged up.